So welcome to the Picture Language Seminar. Today it's with great pleasure we welcome Professor John Wei Pan to the Mathematical Picture Language Seminar. Pan obtained his doctoral degree in 1999 with Anton Zeilinger in Vienna for work even then regarded as progress of the year. When Zeilinger came to Harvard to lecture in 2019, he was proud to show photos of his group with Pan as a student. Now Pan is vice president of the University of Science and Technology of China and Hefei and director of the Chinese Academy of Sciences Center for Excellence in Quantum Information and Quantum Physics in Shanghai. Pan is regarded widely as the leading active quantum scientist in China. In July 2018, I had the pleasure to visit his impressive institute with Cheng Wei Lu, where we learned about quantum computing communication in China, and were also subject to Penn's generous hospitality. Penn has received many national and international prizes and awards. I mention only one, the Newcomb Cleveland Prize, the oldest award of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, which he received in 2018 for his work with the Mikius satellite that demonstrated quantum entanglement between China and Austria, as well as three locations in China. In 2019, Pan became a lead editor of the American Physical Society Journal, Physical Re Review Research. Today, Pan will tell us about another exciting result concerning quantum supremacy with photons. We very much look forward to hearing your story. Professor Penn. Okay. So. Okay. So can you hear? Uh, can you hear me? Very well. Okay. okay. So, dear friend and dear colleague, and good morning. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor. Uh, to Ajafi uh, for the kind invitation, uh, which gave me um, a chance to present our recent work here. Uh, in the following talk, I will first give a brief overview of manipulation of multifold entanglement, and then uh, discuss in details how multifold interferometry enables uh, incremental demonstration of quantum computation advantage on the photonic quantum computer or photonic machine. <clears throat> As we all know, uh, the two pillars of modern physics, quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity have profoundly changed our knowledge of nature and our way of life. So <clears throat> to name a few, uh, thanks to quantum mechanics, so the invention of a transistor, which is the basis of a modern computer, and the laser, which promote modern optical communication and the today's uh, internet. And moreover, and the extremely accurate atomic clock, which is the foundation of the global positioning system. So in a sense, we can say modern information technology is based on uh, quantum uh, mechanics. Okay. So, <clears throat> so are there any challenge in future development of modern information technology? One of the um, major challenge is in information security. Achieving secure information transfer has been the dream of human being since ancient time. For example, a Spartan in 700 BC had already used a cipher tool named Cytel. <clears throat> Since a message was written upon on the wound strip, it appeared as an eligible jump of a letter uh, to anyone who uh, does not bear a Cytel of the appropriate diameter. So around the 50 BC, Julius Caesar of the Roman Empire also invent a shift cipher to ensure a secure information transfer. However, 
this ancient inclusion method can actually be cracked by analyzing the frequency of occurrence of letter. Therefore, historically, we know uh, uh, every, uh, every advance in classic cryptography has been defeated by advance in cracking. So, <clears throat> so during the Second World War, uh, Alan Turing cracked the Enigma uh, cipher machine. Moreover, in modern cryptography, such as the widely used uh, public key encryption system, RSA 512 was corrected in 99, and RSA 768 was corrected in 2009, and even RSA 1024 uh, ha has been considered unsafe. <clears throat> Since all the classical encryption methods that depend on computational complexity can be cracked in principle, so it has been long suspected human ingenuity cannot concoct a cipher which human ingenuity cannot resolve. <laughs> so on the other hand, the demand for computing power has been growing dramatically with social progress. In, 1940, uh, in, 19, uh, uh, in 1943, uh, the former chairman of IBM, Thomas Watson, uh, predict that the world market may only need five computers. However, by 2010, the computing power in the mobile phone today is larger than the total computing power used in Apollo program. So moreover, and, the, and uh, for the time being, the world data volume roughly below 40% per year so we are actually now in the so-called big data era. So therefore, there is unprecedented demand for computational complexity in data analysis. <clears throat> However, the computing power ordered by human is still very limited at the present, and the world total computing power is insufficient to search a target in two to the power of 90 databases within a year. So one of the major technological limit is the Morse law that predicts the transistor density double every 18 months has come to an end. This is because the size of the transistor will soon reach the atomic scale so that the electron tunnel effect will appear and the circular state of zero and one cannot be well defined anymore. So fortunately, uh, quantum mechanics after one century of development come to the rescue of the problem <coughs> uh, confront in the classic information technology. So before I go into in, uh, discuss details of the quantum information protocol, I would like to first give a brief introduction on the quantum superposition principle. As we all know, in our everyday life, a cat can either uh, in and zero or, or, or alive or dead state. However, um, um, according to corner superposition principle, and a cat can even be in a coherent superposition of alive and a dead state. This leads to the consumption of qubit. So physically, any two level system can be used as realization of qubit. And for example, we can export the two position state of a single photon to encode one bit of information. Then according to superposition principle, the position state of a single photon can be an arbitrary superposition of alpha h plus beta v, where the two complex number satisfying the normalization condition. Then <clears throat> if we want to know, and suppose now we want to obtain some information about the two complex number, a simple way is to perform a measurement by sending a single photon through a polarizing beam splitter, which transmit horizontal component and while reflect the vertical component. 
Then in a specific experimental run, with the probability alpha square, the photon will found to be horizontal deposit. With the probability beta square, the photon will found to be a vertical deposit. These simple analysis show no single measurement is sufficient to reveal all the necessary information to reconstruct this unknown state. This consequently leads to the so-called non-cloning theory, which states an unknown corner state cannot be copied uh, precisely. <clears throat> so when we apply the superposition principle to multi-party system, we are led to the consumption of quantum entanglement. For example, for two cat in the quantum world, they can even be in the coherent superposition of alive, alive, and a dead, dead state. This implies if we perform a measurement on the first cat and is found to be in the alive state, then the second cat will instantaneously collapse into the corresponding alive state, no matter how far away they are separate. So Einstein refers this phenomenon as book action at a distance. For a system consisting of two photons, one and two, they can be in one of the following four bell states, the so-called maximally entangled state. So interestingly, from the test of the quantum non-locality of uh, entanglement, physicists have developed groundbreaking technology for coherent manipulation of quantum system. This consequently leads to emerging quantum information technology, including quantum communication and computa quantum computation and so on. So while quantum communication can ensure secure information exchange, quantum computation can greatly enhance the computing power. So quantum key distribution is the best known quantum communication protocol. For example, one could explore the BB84 protocol to implement single photon basic key distribution. With the help of the shared uh, secure key and the one-time pad encryption, uh, one can achieve uh, unconditional secure information transfer. Moreover, one can also explore the perfect correlation of entanglement to perform entanglement visit key distribution. So quantum teleportation is another interesting application of quantum communication, which is a way to transfer quantum information from one particle to another without actually sending the particle itself. This is very much like the way uh, to achieve Star Trek in science fiction, although nowadays it's far, far away from teleporting uh, uh, microscopic objects. So it is visible to teleport various quantum states within a network, which is essential ingredient for distributed quantum network and quantum computation. <clears throat> so uh, quantum computation using quantum bit to encode information, which can be in the coherent superposition, and the information represented by them can be processed in parallel. Therefore, one can evaluate a function fx for many different values of x simultaneously. Uh, with the help of a quantum parallelism, it can thus result in exponential speed up uh, in principle. So one of the most famous quantum algorithm is proposed by Professor Peter Shaw in 1994, by which one can efficiently factorize a large number and break public key inquiry system. Uh, for example, in order to factorize a 300 digit number uh, with the classical T of the computer, it will take us 150,000 years. However, uh, it will only take uh, one second uh, uh, on the key of the quantum computer. So the superpower of quantum computation can also be used to greatly speed up such as the weather forecast, financial analysis, and the drug design. And of course, it will take quite a while before we can realize a fully functional quantum computer. So quantum simulation 
as the intermediate goal is expected to provide a powerful way in the near future for studying many body quantum system. Let us considering, let us consider quantum system of N2 level particle. So which is described by two to the power of uh, N qubit space. Such a system is extremely hardly accessible for classic computer to simulate its evolution. So um, as point about as pointed out by Richard Feynman, a natural solution is to construct a quantum simulator consisting of n particle superposition quantum state engineered to simulate as the evolution of a quantum system. For example, with the help of Archer code atom in optical lattices, one can mimic one can mimic condensed metaphysics uh, and so on. <clears throat> so uh, why we like atom? So among the various candidates for quantum information processing, uh, photon have a unique place because it is naturally a uh, flying qubit and it can transmit quantum information over long distance with a very weak interaction and within, uh, uh, with environment. So thanks, and moreover, thanks to advanced optical engineering, the photon can be controlled with high precision uh, using off the shell device. It is therefore an ideal candidate to connect distant quantum system. <clears throat> So, so how to implement quantum information processing with a photon? So first of all, one need to generate and detect single photon. Since a practical idea single photon source is far out of reach with current technology. So we often use weak coherent pulse as a probabilistic quasi single photon source, where the probability of find one photon in each pulse is much less than one. So P is much smaller than one. So on the other hand, single photon detection can be easily achieved with the commercially available single photon detector, such as uh, Indian Garland uh, arsenic avalanche photo diode, silicon single photon detector, and uh, superconducting nanowire uh, detector. So a single photon unit operation can be easily implemented. For example, the Hadamard gate, which transforms zero to zero plus one, one to zero minus one, can be simply implemented by sending a single photon through a, a common linear optical device, a half wave plate. And moreover, an arbitrary single qubit unit op, uh, operation can also be uh, analyzed uh, undergoing two types of wave plate. So quarter wave plate, half wave plate, and a quarter wave plate. With such a combination, one can achieve arbitrarily single qubit unit operation. <clears throat> so to perform quantum teleportation and quantum computation, one would further need manipulation of entanglement, uh, for example, preparation uh, and detection of entanglement. Uh, to do so, uh, Hadamard gate of single photon and controlling knot gate are sufficient. The so controlling knot gate is a double qubit logic gate. So the logic value <coughs> of the target qubit will be changed only the first qubit is in state uh, one. So with the help of these two gates, one can easily construct a simple quantum circuit to generate and detect bell state. And for example, when input uh, and state are zero, zero, other two photons pass through the Hadamard gate, we will end up this state. The other C0 gate, we will end up a zero, zero plus one, one. This is uh, a maximally intense state five plus. So inversely, if a two photon state undergoing a C naught and Hadamard operation and is finally 
project into zero zero state, we can then identify the input corresponding bell state is the five plus state. So this is the way to perform a bell state measurement. So for photons, C not gate <coughs> would require strong nonlinear coupling between two individual photons. However, since the coupling between photons is negligibly weak, so a perfect C not gate is extremely difficult uh, to realize and still far out of reach uh, within current experimental technology. Therefore, experimentally, entangled photon pair are often generated with a spontaneous parametric down convention. So when input a strong laser UV beam on the BBO crystal with a small, uh, with a small probability P, uh, with a, a small probability, uh, the BBO crystal uh, can simultaneously emit two single photons, which is the second order term of the so-called squeeze the vacuum state, <coughs> uh, K1 and K2, where K is the photon number in mode one and mode two, uh, with the probability amplitude GK. So two photons with horizontal and vertical polarization are distributed each in the up and uh, down uh, cone. Since at the intersection point, we have two combination. The polarization, the two polarization component, horizontal, vertical, and vertical horizontal are indistinguishable. Then according to superposition principle, the two photons are entangled. So they will be in the state HB plus VH. <clears throat> then with the single qubit operation, on psi plus, all the four bell state can be easily transformed and prepared. So that's the way uh, uh, to experimentally prepare a two particle in tank state. So uh, it is possible to explore a uh, linear optics to achieve post-selection induced nonlinearity, uh, uh, nonlinearity. So to do so, one first need to make independent photon identical in all degree of freedom. So for example, one could input two photons with the same polarization a state, horizontal plus vertical and horizontal plus uh, vertical to two put one and two of the polarizing beam splitter. Then there will be four possible output combination. Both photons are transmitted. Both photons are reflected. So we find one photon in each of the two output mode. But we also have another two combination. So one is reflected, the other one is transmitted. Then uh, by post-selecting those events where only one and one and only one photon in each of the two output mode uh, are detected, the position state of the two output photon state will finally in the entangled output state HH plus VV with 50% probability. So in a sense, this corresponding to a probabilistic C not gate, thanks to the post-selection induced nonlinearity and uh, with the help of lean optics and the follow up post-selection, the bell state measurement required by quantum teleportation can be probabilistically implemented which was used for our first quantum teleportation experiments in uh, uh, 1997. So with, the, uh, with this lean optical element, quantum communication can be effectively realized, especially quantum key distribution has become the uh, first practical quantum information technology. This is mainly due to the reason uh, the manipulation and because in quantum key distribution, only manipulation of a single photon is needed. So to achieve practically a uh, practical quantum key distribution, one first need to overcome several security loophole caused by uh, imperfection of realistic device. For example, due to the imperfect single photon source, the secure distance of QKD in fiber 
was limited to the order of 10 kilometers. So in 2007, two independent teams, including us, uh, extend the distance of secure concrete distribution in fiber to the order of to the order of 100 kilometer with the so-called decoy state QKD uh, method. Another important security lubricant is caused by non-idea single photon detector. So in 2013, we realized measurement device independent QKD, which is immune to any attack on detection. And very recently, we ought to manage extend the distance to 500 kilometers in fiber. So this tech, uh, technical in, uh, innovation make application of QKD in metropolitan area uh, visible. So to further extend the quantum communication uh, a distance, so the satellite to ground channel in free space uh, is a promising choice. So with the help of missile satellite uh, launched in uh, August 2016, corner communication at a thousand uh, a kilometer scale has also been achieved uh, a few years ago. Moreover, uh, with the missile satellite and the Beijing Shanghai National Corner Communication and the Backbone uh, integrated space to ground corner communication network over 4,600 kilometers has also been demonstrated very recently. So with all this uh, uh, development, so practically, a uh, uh, <coughs> practical secure QKD with realistic uh, device can be, properly, can be properly accomplished. Then a natural question arises. Are photons sufficient for quantum computing? In fact, uh, quantum computing uh, can be implemented with the so-called quantum circuit model. So in the quantum, so in the quantum circuit model, uh, we first prepare um, a multi-qubit system in the initially superposition state. Then initial superposition state will then undergo a dynamic evolution according to specific uh, algorithm or program. And finally, we can perform a measurement on the output uh, quantum state to read out the computational result. So in the sync, uh, in the in the uh, uh, in the quantum circuit model, since Lloyd has proven that uh, universal quantum computation can be realized with single qubit unitary gate plus two qubit C naught gate. However, uh, with lean optics, so the nonlinearity required by C naught gate between individual photon can only be induced by, uh, by post selection and, uh, and also probabilistically. So a nature question is, is a photon sufficient for, in, uh, for efficient uh, quantum computation? So in 2001, uh, Kenia Laughlin and Melbourne prove a quantum intuitive conclusion. That is, lean optics is sufficient for efficient quantum computation. In their nature paper, they have shown that non-deterministic non quantum logic operation can perform uh, can be performed using lean optic element um, and with the help of multi-photon state, the successful rate of the quantum logic gate can be arbitrarily close to one. Here, I would like to mention uh, an interesting story. So the original purpose of KLM, uh, KLM was to prove lean optics cannot be used for efficient quantum computation. However, after their significant effort, they came to a completely opposite result. Following the KLM scheme, a number of experiments have demonstrated the possibility to realize a probabilistic C0 gate. So since 2003 and 2004 and 2005. So another interesting model of quantum computation is the one-way quantum computation model, uh, which was proposed by Rosendorf and Hans Briegel. And this model 
is specifically suitable for photon. In this model, precise quantum logic gates are not needed. One can first prepare a specific class state, a multi-photon state, and the quantum gate can then be implemented by measuring particle in a certain order and in a certain basis. And thus, the final measurement result on this specific uh, class state will correspond to the computational and outcome. So no matter which model <coughs> would be implemented, so the essential task of optical quantum computing is the generation and the manipulation of multi-photon state. So therefore, since at the time, uh, uh, um, practical single photon source was far out of reach, so a national solution is to explore two-fold entanglement via parametric down conversion to generate multi-fold entanglement. For example, in the uh, in our four photon entanglement experiment, two pair of uh, uh, entangled photon uh, were prepared via parametric down conversion, and the photons photon two and the photon three are further sent through a polarizing uh, beam splitter, then conditioned on detecting one and only one photon in the output mode two and three, then the four photon will and collapse into a four particle GHZ state. So in the 2001 experiment, uh, the probability of producing an uh, entangled pair during a um, single passage of UV power is very low, as you can see here, which is only about 10 to minus five. So in, 2000, uh, uh, in 2007, by developing a bright uh, laser pump source, we managed to significantly upgrade the brightness of two photo entanglement. Uh, the single pair production rate was improved from 10 to minus five to 10 to minus uh, three. So by further inch, so, so then, and we can, uh, by further introducing uh, additional pair, a third pair, five and a six, and sending photon four and five through a polarizing beam splitter. And then, I mean, conditioned on uh, to detect one and only one photon in mode four and five, then the a photon one, two, three, four, five, six will in a six uh, photon a GHZ state or six photon entangled state. So if we further insert a uh, hardware plate in mode of two to rotate the polarization state of photon four by 45 degree, then the final post-selected six photon state will be a six qubit class state, which can be used for one-way quantum computation. <clears throat> so if we want to further uh, increase the number of entangled photon, a much higher brightness of two-fold entanglement is needed. This is because the probability feature of two-fold entanglement the spontaneous bond conversion will cause an exponential decay with the number of the entangled photon pair in the successful rate of multi-photon entang event. For example, the probability to have two photon entanglement P, then four photon will P square and eight photon will P to the power of four. So therefore, we need to uh, further uh, improve the uh, brightness of entangled photon source. So as I just mentioned, uh, high pump power can increase the brightness of two-fold entanglement. However, uh, in this case, unwanted double pair emission will also be increased. So this will degrade the fidelity of a multi-photon entanglement due to the double pair emission. So can we further push the brightness of two-fold entanglement meanwhile still with high fidelity. So, <clears throat> so one important observation is that in the, 
in the ultra fast uh, parametron conversion, so different polarization are associated with different uh, spectrum bandwidth. So for example, we observe the bandwidth for horizontal component and the bandwidth for vertical component are six and 12 nanometer respectively. So in our form experiments, uh, 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 in order to uh, make the photon indistinguishable and uh, we need to use narrow band filter, uh, which is about three nanometer. And uh, this way will cause unnecessarily waste of uh, photon. So therefore we develop a uh, better inframetric bell state synthesize to disentangle the timing for from the polarization, which allow us to increase the photon pair brightness by about one order of magnitude. So from 10 to minus three to 10 to minus two. So with this improvement, we managed in 2012 uh, uh, to implement eight photon entanglement. However, there were still two additional problems in, in our eight photon entanglement source that make it imperfect. One is that the collecting from the intersection of the two ring is insufficient in the terms of pumping efficiency and the coupling efficiency into the fiber. Therefore, in 2016, and we develop a bean-like spontaneous dawn conversion source where the two ring are separated. Then we can collect all the light into our single mode of fiber. So in this way, we manage to increase and the uh, probability from 10 to minus three to 10 to minus two. Then further, by improving uh, uh, and the beam ship, we manage to uh, erase the frequency correlation. So then, uh, no dialo, so no uh, narrow band filtering is necessary. We also gain a small improvement. So finally, uh, three years ago, we managed to achieve a 12 photon entanglement. So with all this technology of multiple entanglement over the past decades, we have systematically performed proof of principle demonstration on various quantum algorithm, including the global search algorithm, um, uh, sure factorized algorithm, and uh, also uh, solving linear system of equation and the quantum machine learning. Of course, this is just a kind of proof of principle uh, demonstration. So, and the, beside uh, the size of the qubit, in order to achieve scalable uh, quantum computing, another essential task is uh, to achieve a quantum error correction so that we can overcome the quantum bit error caused by unavoidable noise in the quantum circuit. Quantum error correction is similar to redundant coding in classical computing. So various error correction code has been proposed. And for example, in 95, uh, Peter Shaw already proposed a nine qubit error correction code and so on. However, in order this traditional error correction code, one of the challenge is the tolerable error threshold uh, is typically along 10 to minus five, which is very difficult uh, to achieve within a practical uh, technology. So one of the uh, possible uh, 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 and uh, interesting solution is as suggested by Kitip and others, one could use a topological quantum computing. So, and this is because uh, in this case, quantum bit and the gate can be protected at the physical level with energy gap in the physical system. So it can significantly relax the threshold for scalable quantum computing from 10 to minus five to 10 to minus two. So the basic idea of a topologic quantum computing is to encode qubit to the degenerate ground state of a physical system. Then the error are prohibited as there is a big energy gap 
between the ground state and excited state. So the gate operation, so the gate operation are relied by braiding the anion, uh, which are called a particle existing in the system. So this is the basic idea. So with the technology of multi-photon entanglement, we also uh, perform some proof of them, a uh, proof of principle demonstration and to reveal the fractional statistic of anion uh, with six photon entanglement. And later, we also report a proof of principle demonstration of a simplest example of a topological quantum error correction with eight photon entanglement. It seems so far everything goes all right, but actually it's not the case because, and we still have huge technical challenge in scalable quantum computing. And so far, as I just mentioned, one has only verified the possibility of quantum computing. For example, the sure factor algorithm, what we demonstrate is only to factorize 15 is equal to five times three, which is a question even a child can answer. So how to build a quantum computer that can really beat classical supercomputer. So given the huge technical challenge, it will take quite a while, as I just mentioned, before we can realize the fully functional quantum computer. So to ensure a healthy uh, development of quantum computation research, so the scientific community has set three stage goal towards the ultimate realization of a practical quantum computer. So the first one is called quantum computational uh, advantage, which means the speed up is so overwhelmingly huge such that no classical uh, computer can perform the same task in a reasonable amount of time and is unlikely over overturned by classical algorithm or hardware improvement. So this is the first milestone. So the second one is to construct some quantum simulator to efficiently mimic the evolution of a complex quantum system. For example, with the help of article atom in optical lattice, one can study the mechanism of high temperature uh, superconducting, a corner hall effect, and so on. And the third and the ultimate goal is to realize a, a, a universal and a programmable quantum computer with the help of quantum error correction. So now I come to our recent experiments. So currently, um, <clears throat> there are two main uh, algorithms for demonstrating uh, quantum computation advantage. So the first one is called Boson sampling and which is proposed by Alanson and uh, uh, Akhipov uh, uh, in 2013. So in Boson sampling, if input a single photon uh, into areas of being split, and it is analog of the uh, classical Gilton board. Yeah. <clears throat> However, and the output uh, will be totally different from the classical one due to the quantum interference. So here is a, a, a probability and distribution of the boson sampling, but here the probability and distribution in the classical Gelton board. Moreover, when we input a more photon into a, 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 an optic circuit, the boson sampling will exhibit a much more complex statistics due to a multi-photon quantum interference. So uh, how to uh, predict uh, these output statistics? So the classical method is to calculate the corresponding submetric uh, permanent, uh, M time M and which is M time X matrix, and which is proportional to the output probabilistic, uh, probabilistic distribution. Consider we have uh, M input photon into a N mode uh, linear optical network. 
as shown in the uh, here. The permanent is uh, defined similar to the uh, determinant as a sum of the product of a set of uh, matrix entry that is lying in the uh, distinct, uh, distinct row and the column. Yeah, and for example, and for a simple case is like this, and for, for three times three is like this. However, where the a determinant weighs each of these product with a plus minus sign based on the parity of the set in the boson sampling, the permanent weighs them all with the plus signs. <clears throat> uh, here, I would like to mention an interesting factor. So if we replace the boson with the fermium, and because boson commute and the fermium and the commute, then there will be a minus sign in some component. Then the situation in the fermion case will become a calculation of a different function, which is the determinant. The calculation of the determinant is computational easy, but the calculation of permanent is uh, uh, very hard. So uh, with the classic computer, and it will spend more than two to the time of M step to sample from M, uh, M input boson sampler because the calculation of permanent is a sharp P complete problem. To show the hardness of this task, the limitation, so the, so the limitation of the uh, classic computer is shown in this figure with about 50 and 50 single photon, the complexity of um, calculation will challenge our fastest uh, supercomputer today. So interestingly, if we design a simple interference uh, circuit and uh, uh, with 50 photon uh, input, then the boson sampling uh, uh, and then direct measure and the output uh, photon distribution, we can effectively solve this problem. So this means a common competition advantage could be achieved. However, to perform this experiment, we have to overcome a number of uh, challenge, especially for large scale boson sampling. So first of all, we need high efficiency and high indistinguishability of a single photon source. Moreover, we also will need a multi-mode interflow matter with a high transmission rate and also and during the interference uh, and during the and inside the interflow matter, we have to make and make the phase is very stable. And moreover, and the hard random matrix and should have a very large mode volume. And moreover, unlike a sure algorithm where a solution can be efficiently verified. And for example, and you can, and after you get the two factor, you can simply multiply them, you can know whether your calculation result is correct. But for boson sampling, a full, a full certification of the outcome is strongly conjecturally to be intractable for classic computation. So we also, uh, and we also need to find a way of validation of the opportunity sample. So we have to verify our result is somehow is uh, um, uh, and uh, correct result or the right outcome of the boson sampling with high probability. So, I mean, after knowing and the idea of um, Alison and his and colleague in 2013. So during a conference in 2013, uh, held at the University of Würzburg in Germany, and together with Chao Yang Lu, so he is in this picture, and he is also one of the senior author in our recent work. So <clears throat> we evaluate the possibility of using uh, uh, and uh, uh, of using two photon entanglement uh, source of PDC for realization of 50 photon boson sampling. 
But after the calculation, we are very upset because we found that it's extremely hard to increase the number of entangled photons up to 50 due to the probabilistic feature of uh, PDC. With the best two uh, photon entangled source, so circuit and detect, so a 50 photon coincidences would be as low as 10 to the power of 150, uh, no, and 10 to the power of minus 150. This is much too low. So we were forced to consider uh, to develop more efficient way to realize the multiple in the flow matching. So according to our estimation, uh, and it might be possible uh, to use deterministic single photon source from quantum dot. So at that time, we start to collaborate with our colleague from Germany at the University of Wurzburg to develop single photon source from quantum dot. So for a perfect single photon source, it must be simultaneously fulfilling uh, uh, and fulfill the following checklist. First, the single photon should be created in a push button uh, fashion and collected into a single special mode with high efficiency. If the collection efficiency is very lower, then once again, our source is a probabilistic source. Then second, and the emission should have a very small two photon or multi photon probability so that we could have a high purity and high, um, uh, uh, prop, uh, um, uh, high uh, fidelity. And third, the, the photon should be identically in all degree of freedom, such that uh, we can observe the necessarily uh, quantum interference. So in collaboration with our colleague and from University of Wurzburg, we choose to work with Indian Galen arsenic quantum dot embedded in uh, uh, Galen arsenic, which can be seen as a giant artificial atom. So we uh, develop um, pulse resonance fluorescence uh, to coherently excite and this artificial uh, atom which is a, a solid state two level system. So it is the cleanest way to deterministically uh, produce single photon source with a near uh, and a unit uh, interchangeability. So which is as high as 99.5%. So furthermore, by coupling the single photon dot uh, inside uh, and the micro cavity, and we greatly enhance the light matter interaction due to the perk cell effect, which helps the emitting single photon to, the, uh, to be directional and in the Gaussian profile, so that we have a high uh, extraction efficiency and high correction efficiency. So moreover, and we also employ a, a, a elliptical and micro pillar to selectively enhance only one polarization and to produce polarized single photon with both high efficiency and interchangeability. With all this development based on high efficiency single photon source and lower photon uh, multifold interferometry, and we first implement a, a five photon boson sampling machine uh, along 2000. Uh, uh, in the end of 2016. As a baby step, such a machine show a sampling rate, which is about 100 times faster than the earliest classic computer, ENIAC and the TRADIC. So, and after two years, in 2019, we scale up boson sampling with 20 single photo input, uh, 16 mode. Uh, so, and uh, in this case, and uh, the output state space dimension is of two to the power of 48, which already approach to the quantum computational advantage uh, and uh, regime. So this is our result in the end of 2019. 
So then, I mean, after few years effort, we find although and the further improvement of a single photon uh, is in progress. And uh, uh, in our lab, we have managed to increase the quantum rate to over 30 million single photon per second. And also we are confident to go up to 40 million per second. However, and even with such a method and uh, which can only support the boson sampling up to 30 photon, which, and, uh, which uh, 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 will outperform the best laptop by 10,000 times, but still cannot beat a supercomputer. So after so many year effort, and we face a problem. But uh, thanks to the selection or mathematician, so fortunately, and uh, a new type of uh, boson sampling, uh, so Gaussian boson sampling were proposed along 2017. Unlike the original boson sampling that require single photon. So the Gaussian, so the Gaussian boson sampling can use squeezed vacuum state as input, but still has a similar classical computational complexity as boson sampling. So the squeezed vacuum state can be seen as a superposition, yeah, as a superposition of different even photon number state from uh, zero, two, four, six, and so on. So sending multi squeeze state and slower interflow matter and sampling the output event using single photon detector, then the output uh, unfold event distribution is related to the calculation of the matrix function called Harfanian, which actually is uh, and the probability of all possible input photon number combination with all possible uh, paths. So with correspond to calculation of a sub, uh, sub matrix of Harfanian. So amazingly, a uh, Gaussian boson sampling can make full use of spontaneous parallel magic tone conversion. So we can still use the former technology to make manipulation of more photon visible with our former accumulated multi-photon entanglement uh, 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 technology. So it's really a, a interesting story. So first uh, we want to use bond conversion, but we find out bond conversion is not useful for boson sampling. Then we use single photon uh, from quantum dot. Then finally we find out that we still have some trouble. Then finally with the help of a theoretical proposal, we find out our original bond conversion method can be used for showing a content advantage. So uh, to scale up to more than 50 photon, we need to develop high performance content light source for Gaussian boson sampling. So we design a new laser system to pump simultaneously 25 uh, uh, PPKTP crystal, which are designed so that they can generate two mode squeeze state with high squeezing parameter. So in this case, I mean, so the, uh, as a photon, so the average, so the mean photon number is not a problem. Uh, and actually it is the advantage. So, <clears throat> so in this way, and uh, we can generate two mode squeeze state with a high squeezing parameter and still with high indistinguishability and high correction efficiency and so on. So as the Gaussian boson sampling rely on coherent manipulation of uh, photon number state, so phase control of all the uh, 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 two mode squeeze state is required from the beginning of their generation to the propagation inside the whole photonic interflow matter. So here is our experimental setup. So as a 25 two mode uh, squeezed uh, and squeezed vacuum state are then combined in the hundred time high, a hundred time high, time uh, connect in the flow matter, 
which is phase stabilized and have a half and have a wave packet overlap and also up to 99.5 and also with a near unit uh, transmission rate and uh, we can implement the uh, high random metrics as required. So as I, uh, uh, as I just mentioned, so taking advantage of the photon number state means that we have to face lock the whole optical setup, uh, which is incrementally very challenging. So in our, in our experiment, with the help of temperature stabilization and the phase feedback, we manage. So um, um, uh, our optical setup has uh, 50 independent paths, each with a two meter free space and a 20 meter optical fiber. But we finally managed to uh, lock the face to a, a face precision to the order of 25 nanometer. And moreover, and we also and develop uh, our homemade uh, uh, high efficiency superconducting nanowire single photon detector, which with efficiency of 80%. Very recently, we already improved this single photon efficiency to 95%. So, so having built the Gaussian bosom sampling machine, we then need to perform a calibration to show the system work properly. And uh, we start from small scale testing for arbitrary and uh, two input mode. So, and at a small scale, and we can fully measure the output distribution and compare with the idea case. So for example, here is our result for the probability distribution at uh, for different combination. Here is our uh, and a theoretical calculation. So the fidelity can be up to, uh, is almost, uh, is about 99%, which demonstrate our optical setup is aligned properly. So the uh, interplane pattern is really very much the same as the theoretical uh, prediction. So after the systematic calibration in the experiment, we send all the, 25 two mode squeeze state or 50 single mode squeeze state through the boson sampling machine. So the validation of the boson sampling result is a significant challenge. As mentioned before, unlike short algorithm, where a solution can be efficiently verified. But for the GBS, a, full a fully uh, certification of the outcome is strongly uh, conjecture to be intractable for classic computation. So we need to provide uh, a strong evidence that the large scale uh, uh, Gaussian Boson sample machine device continue to be governed by quantum mechanics when it reach quantum advantage regime by gathering uh, circumstantial evidence while ruling out all possible uh, hypotheses possibly uh, to occur in the experiment. So there are two most important hypotheses uh, and they are thermal state. So thermal state would result from excessive photon loss in the interferometer. And also uh, due to the distinguishability for individual photon, which would be caused by the mode uh, mission machine. So as shown in this figure, there are strong deviation in the line shift and the peak position in the photon number distribution. And moreover, and we can see more uh, and deviation when we perform a two point correlation uh, uh, and a function uh, calculation. So here and the, and the, and the a yellow one, is a serial result, and the red one is our experimental result. So our experimental result is very much in agreement with the theory, while for the, um, uh, for the thermal state and distinguishable uh, case, and is and very much different and for uh, the uh, 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 experimental case. 
So which I give a good indication, I mean, our setup work properly. So having starting the whole distribution, next we take a closely uh, and a close look into each subspace with a specific photon click number. So one of the earliest criticized to boson sampling is that the boson sampling output would be op uh, operationally indistinguishable uh, from a uniform random outcome. However, due to constructive and destructive interference, an idea boson sampler is expected to generate samples with exponentially uh, uh, different and different occurring probability. So, and we so and we try to calculate and from 34 photon and up to 40 photon. Here is our calculation and with the classic computer. So, and this is theoretical curve for the uh, and the probability distribution for different combination. So we can calculate our uh, probability distribution on the classic computer up to 40 photon. So here is a 40 photon and uh, result. So the, so the, and the blue line is a measurement result from our experiments. Yeah. So, and the, for up to 40 photon, we show that the density. So the frequency of occurrence. So of the blue line is indeed in good agreement with the theoretically calculated probability, which intuitively indicated that our result cannot be reproduced by a uniform uh, sampler. So, <clears throat> so, uh, so uh, we name our uh, Gaussian boson sampling uh, machine, Jiu Zhang, uh, in order to honor uh, ancient Chinese mathematic textbook. So the Jiu Zhang uh, and detect up to 76 photon and its sampling rate is about 10 to 14 times uh, uh, fast than the classical uh, supercomputer with and uh, with current known optimal algorithm showing the quantum computation advantage using photon. And another here, I also would like to mention another important algorithm for demonstrating quantum computation advantage is random circular sampling, which was proposed in 2018 and demonstrated on the quantum processor uh, with 53 superconducting qubit by Google in 2019. So the device has generated a million noise sample in 200 seconds while the first estimation would take about 10,000 years on the state of the art classic supercomputer uh, summit. Uh, however, it was late argued by IBM that the classic algorithm can be improved to cost on a few days to compute all the two to the power of 53 probability amplitude and generate idea uh, 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 sample if with and if we can have enough memory space. So this would imply if the task were to output a much larger size of a sample, then the computation advantage would be oh, and would be reversed. So comparing with the Google's uh, a thinkable result, an interesting feature of Jiu Zhang is that due to the high dimensional, um, uh, high dimensional uh, nature of photon, its, out, its output space reach 10 to the power of 30, which is 14 order magnitude larger. So this implies the demonstrated computation advantage is independent of the size of the sample. So in this way, we can close the remaining sample size dependent loophole in the previous uh, 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 work. So you can see, I mean, I mean in the, and the sycamore result, if we only, to create 1 million sample. So for the content will take 20, 200 seconds. But if we need to generate 10 million sample, then it will take 20 days. But for the classic supercomputer, it always take two days. So, but for the Gaussian boson sampling in Jiuzhan, I mean, so the advantage and remain uh, the same. 
So like the bio test, a uh, quantum computational uh, advantage will not be a single short experiment, but it require long-term computation between uh, fastest classical simulation and improved quantum device. So the race is on and we move on and improve the performance of our Jiuzhan for quantum, for the quantum light source, we use a stimulated PDC very recently, which increase the brightness by four times. Um, so for the optical network, and we also upgrade from 100 mode to, to 144 mode. So we use a new in the flow matter. Such improvement give rise to significant enhancement of the performance. As you can see, and uh, from the preliminary data, which we just measured a few days ago, uh, the detected photon number is now up to uh, 108, so 108. So the corresponding corner speed up is increased from 14 to 24th order of magnitude. So finally, uh, I would like to briefly mention and the Gaussian bone sampling links to potentially a practical application, such as graph related problem, and also and uh, quantum uh, chemistry, and also quantum machine learning as uh, and proposed by several theoretical idea. So, so very recently, we plan to study in the uh, 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 we plan to study to showing some. Uh, uh, and the possibility in the field of quantum machine learning. So uh, before concluding uh, my talk, yeah, actually I already a little bit out of time. Please allow me to briefly mention our other efforts in the research of superconducting uh, cubic and arch code atom. So superconducting quantum circuit and arch code atom in optical uh, are promising candidate of quantum computing and quantum simulation since their scalability and high precision quantum manipulation. So in superconducting quantum computation, we have realized entanglement of up to uh, 12 superconducting qubit and also demonstrate a topological lobotomous uh, of, an of anonic braiding statistics. And very recently, and fabrication and measurement of 66 qubit device for random circuit sampling are in progress. So we hope to finish this experiment in the near future. And also, and also article the atom also form a, a, and a, a novel system for corner simulation. A since interaction between atom can be precisely controlled and thus various Hamiltonian can be uh, implemented. So very recently, and we already demonstrated uh, a Tori code Hamiltonian and the anonic fractional statistics, which is essentially uh, for topological error correction. Moreover, uh, to obtain entanglement of a large number of atoms with high fidelity, we developed a new cooling method with the help of this method, we are achieve a lattices with a near unit feeling factor over almost 10,000 sites. So meanwhile, we also manage to prepare uh, atom atom entanglement with high, with high fidelity up to uh, 1,200 pair. So very recently, and uh, we create a 71, a corner simulator to perform a simulation of um, a strong colored arch code atom system uh, to simulate the quantum electrodynamics is partially, so the Gaussian law corresponding to the local gauge invariance of the showing uh, an equation is verified in our experiments. Okay, so, and uh, before I uh, end my talk, I will mention uh, our future plan. So our five to 10 years uh, plan is to realize quantum computer or quantum simulator with coherently manipulation of a few thousand 
or a, a, a few hundred to thousand qubit to realize quantum simulation by which one can study the mechanism of high temperature superconducting, quantum Hall effect and so on. In the next 15 to 20 years, I think it might be possible if we manage to uh, uh, find a good way to achieve quantum error correction in the next 10 years, then it should be possible to extend up to millions of qubit to realize universal and uh, programmable quantum computer. I think uh, in next 20 years. So uh, to end my talk, I would like to quote uh, um, uh, Professor Andrew Yao. Uh, uh, and he said one in his talk, a nature has two outstanding achievements, a designing very uh, intricate quantum law and creating the humankind and whose brain is among the most uh, complex in the universe. With the quantum computing, we will finally be able to solve quantum equation and thus understanding quantum law and with artificial intelligence. And we <clears throat> hopefully we can create intelligence that have ability like <laughs> a quantum mind. Uh, yeah. So more excitingly, uh, we could understand or probably uh, create new intelligence. Uh, maybe we can go beyond nature. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, John Pan. This was an absolutely beautiful talk. It covered your past achievements, your recent results, and your hopes for the future. I think that there'll be a great deal of discussion. So why don't we open the floor and uh, hear from the audience? Misha, do you have anything to say? Okay, so it's, you know, hi, John Wei, good to see you. Hi. Thank you for a fantastic talk. So I have a question. So um, you probably remember those kind of days when people were kind of very much hoping to use squeeze states for, you know, for improved interferometry and so on. And the big problem was, was losses. Right. So I'm curious, what is kind of, what are the losses in right. the setup? So and actually, setup, and, and more specifically, if the final state you get is actually non-classical after right. all of these interferometers. Yeah, so in our, so that's the reason why uh, we do not use as a chip. So for the photonic chip, the loss is huge. So here we just use free space uh, into from meta and so on. So the loss is very small. So for each being is only about uh, a few percent. So after all the uh, uh, interference pattern, so it's about 95% photon can still reach the final detector. Yeah. yeah. But you have a lot of beams, right? So all, all together that adds up, right? The loss probability is high. Uh, so we try to measure, for example, we send each beam and through the whole interflow matter, then we measure the final density of the light. So the yeah. final density is 98, no, 95%. Yeah. See, yeah. per beam. Yeah. Per one yeah. beam. For, yeah, yeah. Yes. But, for you have, beam. but you have like 100 of them, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so and what I mean is, and for them, you send in one beam, right? Yeah. Then after the, uh, and a single beam through the 100 mode uh, interflow matter. So you measure the overall density end up in your single photon detector. So the yeah. total probability is 95%. Yeah. That's right. But if you send 100 beams and each of them is 95%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, it's, then basically you have to multiply these probabilities, right? The overall, let's say. Uh, right. So right. the overall, uh, you're right. So the, so the overall is 30. You, yeah, you're right. So overall is 35 percent. Yeah, if I remember correctly, I have a number in my yeah, it's 35 percent. Yeah. Yeah, overall is 35. But usually, like 35 percent for the squeeze state will leave no squeezing, basically. 
right? Uh, that's a good question. So here we try to, as I mentioned, we try to characterize uh, the different one is uh, uh, due to the loss, right? So I show, and we have, and two, I mean, and we have some method. So following the theoretical uh, idea. So we try to identify our result is something quantum. Uh, just um, maybe I still share with you uh, my, just a second. Where, where, where is my, okay. Okay. So, sorry, just a second. Okay, yeah, it should be somewhere here. Yeah, so can you see and from this uh, and the slide? So I mean, uh, yeah, so I mean, there's some I mean, theoretical treatment is uh, but not, not developed by us. So here, so the red line is our um, experimental result. So here is the thermal light. So the thermal light is, is like this. So, and the uh, distinguishable one if with uh, a motor match is, I uh, mean, and uh, should uh, be like this. So, I mean, and here is our first measurement. Then we also to perform a, a two point correlation and a measurement. So you can also see and the, uh, and the difference and between uh, the, our experiments and with loss. And so a result from the uh, excessive photon loss. But uh, for more, I have to see the details. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean, th this formal light is of course completely, right? It's an extreme case, right? So in reality, you probably have something in between, right? Right. Yeah, okay. That's a very good question. Maybe maybe we should discuss more in details and afterward. Yeah, so that's a very good question. So, so, so uh, as I said, I mean, and uh, we, we really don't know, I mean, uh, how to uh, fully verify, but uh, okay. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I will think about it and afterward, I do not have the right answer for you. Yeah, okay. So um, one child, Shu asks, what would be a good platform to have a large number, maybe 1 million qubits? Ah, uh, okay. I think, uh, <coughs> yeah, actually, there are many possibilities, right? So, I mean, for example, according to Google's um, load map, so if they manage uh, within the I mean, next uh, uh, three or four years, if they manage, um, uh, I mean, to perform so the topological error correction uh, with the Tori code method, because they plan to show the possibility to encode one logic qubit into uh, a, a few hundred uh, a physical qubit, then that means they should be possible go up to a few million, I mean, uh, qubit. So that's the way probably we will follow. So we also have a plan. So that's the reason why I and just mentioned we are now, I mean, after our experiment with six, six qubit, then we already working on uh, and uh, 1,000 or um, yeah, something like, I mean, uh, uh, superconducting qubit. So we are working on this, yeah. So this is something what I can see. Uh, probably if we uh, are lucky, we can find a way to solve the quantum error correction method, then I think it should be possible to, to go up to millions of qubits. And of course, recently, for example, 
and Mika, I mean, in his um, uh, Rydberg atom, they also have a lot of uh, nice result. Uh, for example, optical atom in optical lattice. But for this, maybe we can go up to a few hundred or few thousand. But I think it will be difficult to go up to a million. Yeah. So how, how many Misha can you do? Uh, sorry? How many what? Maybe you're muted, but yeah. Yeah. So what's what's the question? I thought you were asking me. No, oh, the they they asked how many how many qubits can can you do? Or well, I mean, right now many? we're experimenting with you know with over two hundred, but we don't know. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's not. No one knows if someone ever can create a coherent system and quantum system at one million, you know, controllable qubits, programmable qubits, right? Yeah. That's an open question. Yeah. So, so I think, so in the next step, and actually after the content advantage, I would say quantum error correction is a very important uh, task. And also in the meantime, I see quantum simulation is also very important. We can have some near term Result to give uh, to give ourselves confidence. Yeah. So, Chengwei, do you have any comment on the error correction? Uh, not on error correction, but I'm curious about the measurement. Like for the when the number is above forty, and how could they like verify the measurement? Um, ah, okay. So as I just mentioned, so I mean, uh, and actually in our uh, first submission of our paper, and we only, I mean, uh, perform uh, uh, comparison, and we using a supercomputer to calculate from 34 photon to 38 photon, right? Mm -hmm. Then we compare, so, so the density distribution of the uh, of the probability. So we find out, so the result measured from our uh, Boston sampling machine is very much the same as a, a classic computer computational uh, and result. So, um, and after the, so the first long review, so the and review also to perform more calculation on the classical supercomputer. Then we go up to 40 single photon. But then I mean up to 40 photon, it's already very difficult uh, and which costs us lots of money. It costs us, uh, I think is two or three million Chinese yuan. Then we say, okay, we, 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 we don't want to pay more money to do, I mean, uh, such a thing, right? So then I mean up to 40 photon, it's always, I mean, I mean, and our, I mean, uh, uh, probability density distribution is very much the same as the classical result. But after that, we don't know. So, and yes, probably, and Mika is asking a very uh, important question. So how to verify this is still governed by the uh, quantum. For the time being, we only have three methods. I, as I just mentioned, for, for one case, is for a for the exchange case is the thermal, and the other one is it is change and keep uh, distinguishable. Then the third one is we our result is very much the same with a, a classical supercomputer result up to forty photon. Yeah, and maybe we should sit down to to uh, look into the details and what will happen as uh, uh, yeah as Michael uh, said yeah. There was another question in the chat about long fibers. Who who asked that question? I think that person is no longer here.
So are there any other comments? It's a very impressive story. Is your lab open full time now? Yeah. So, so in China, so the situation is much better now because although we do not travel very often, but we uh, we go to restaurants and also we are in the laboratory because we 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 obey the control law very strictly. So after a while, the COVID nineteen basically gone, right? Yeah. Uh, but of course, we also already take vaccine, as I just mentioned to you, yeah, <laughs> for the second time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think your your project is uh, is really pointing to the future. It's very interesting, and uh, we look forward to very much interaction and. Knowing, uh, thank you very much for coming to tell us about this. Uh, but maybe there are some other discussion. I think people have been overwhelmed. <laughs> thank you, Chang Wei. Oh, yes, thank you, Chang Wei. Thank you, Mika. Thank you, yeah. All the best. Great to see you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Bye-bye.